Hi, welcome to VotingTechTalk.com. We've got another question from a fellow voter. Uh, Dave asks, Jeff, I'm about to complete the purchase of a new used boat. Congrats. There are two 12-volt uh, lead-acid batteries, both around 90 and a half hours in size, one for engine uh, start and the other for house loads. Is there a way to establish the condition of these batteries? I don't want, I, I don't wish to head out in the new boat to find out that the batteries are not holding a charge. Okay. So how do we go about testing batteries aboard our boats, either because we purchased them or we really don't know the condition? Uh, the good news is it's a little bit of a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news. So let's start with the good news. Um, when it comes to testing a starter battery, uh, a good way to test your starter battery is actually to start your boat. Realistically, if your starter is functional, and you have a circuit there, you know, what I would do is I would actually try to start my boat. Um, I might even have the choke on or something to disable it to start and see what happens to the voltage as you're cranking, right? Uh, it's normal on a boat to see around 10 and a half, you know, 10-ish, 9 and a half, 11. Maybe some people have bigger batteries, 11 and a half, but see how quickly the engine starts, right? Um, compared to what you would expect. You know, for technicians, they would probably put in a, uh, a load tester, so a carbon pile load tester on the battery, and they would stimulate a large current draw. You know, they might be able to choose a 300 amp or 400 amp or 600 amp current draw, and they would hold that current draw for about 10 seconds. And they want to see that the voltage doesn't sag for, it's normally going to sag, you're going to start maybe at, you know, 12.8, maybe it's a residual like floating voltage, maybe it's 13.3 volts for a 12 volt battery. And the moment you put the load on, the voltage is going to drop to probably around 10 and a half. And then it's going to stay there. And that's what you want. You want to see that voltage be able to hold on while the engine is starting. And obviously, when the engine starts, then the alternator kicks in. And when the alternator kicks in, then obviously things change. So it's really about the moment prior to the engine starting, right? When you're turning it over, but the engine hasn't actually started yet. So that's how you would test your starting battery. In terms of testing your house battery, uh, that's harder um, because now you're not testing a small load or a large load for a short period of time. You're testing small loads for a long period of time. And to do that is called a C20 discharge test, right? So you want to, in your case, you've got a 90 amp hour battery. You divide that 90 amp hour, divide by 20. So you get around 4.5 amps of load and you apply 4.5 amps. And that can't be even intermittent load, right? because uh, otherwise it comes on and off, that doesn't count. So a fridge, for example, would not count. A uh, light would, right? Or something that just stays on. A refrigerator would also be a problem because they normally turn on and off. And you're basically going to see how long it takes you from the moment the batteries are full till you get to 10.5 volts. And once you get to 10.5, your batteries are, that's the floor. If it took you 10 hours to get there at 4.5, that means your batteries are 50% of capacity, right? Because 45 over 90 is a half. Now, some of you will only get three hours out of your batteries. Some of you might get 16, 17, 18, maybe 19 hours out of your batteries. But when you do a C20 discharge, it's really basically another way of describing it is a little bit like, how long is it going to take me to run a marathon? Well, you know, you might not need, it's hard to extrapolate running a, you know, a hundred meter dash or a 200 meter dash and saying how someone's going to run a marathon. So what you end up doing is you run a 10K and then from that, you can sort of extrapolate. And that's what a um, C20 test is. It's a little bit like running a 10K. You got to, you got to run some time just for a day, 20 hours. And then you can extrapolate that to figure out how the battery would do if you had to discharge it over a longer period of time. So two different ways. One way for testing engine batteries, which is a carbon low carbon pile load tester, which can be easily simulated with a starter if you've got a good starter on our boats, on our engines. And the other one is called the C20 test. So great question, Dave, and thanks for asking. And any of you have comments on how you go testing your batteries, please post them down below because sharing is caring. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, 
we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.